5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. This is about space. America's return to space with news and information on our U.S. space program is your host of About Space, David Denault. Welcome, and thanks for joining me today. A recent study published in the Journal of Cryosphere found that the Earth has lost a staggering 28 trillion tons of ice since the mid-1990s, and a large portion of which was from the Arctic, including the Greenland Ice Sheet. Now, Dr. Ted Scambos is a senior research scientist at the National Snow and Ice Data Center at the University of Colorado, and he says we're crossing thresholds not seen in a millennia. And he says, frankly, that's not going to change until we adjust what we're doing to the air. And I'll have more next as America and the world listens to About Space today. About Space invites you to be our guest for the next SpaceX Crew-3 launch on Sunday, October the 31st. Be our guest with overnight lodging at the Best Western on Cocoa Beach with a full breakfast and all the amenities at the Oceanfront Hotel, plus two tickets to see the Kennedy Space Center. So come be our guest. Just go to our special website, aboutspacetoday.com. GoDaddySites.com. That's about space today. GoDaddySites.com. And enter today and be our guest for the next manned SpaceX launch. Welcome back. Dr. Ted Scampo says some people say, Why care? We're not going to be around that much longer anyway. I'm Ted Scampos. I work at the University of Colorado's National Snow and Ice Data Center. I'm the lead scientist for our group. I've been convinced by the evidence of global warming, of climate change. It's not a question of belief. I've got no choice. It's a fact. There were events in one part of Antarctica that were so dramatic and so beyond what the normal pace of evolution had been in Antarctica that it convinced me that it wasn't going to wait in the polar areas, that things were going to happen rapidly, especially in areas that are close to the freezing point of water. Think of all of the fires and cars and factories and the soot that we put into the atmosphere. The planet is not that big. I find that there's people out there that think that there's every probability that the human race just isn't going to be around all that much longer. And so why worry? And you can't let that be a guiding theme for how you look at the future because you're committing folks that might figure out how to get around some of these problems and then they'll say, you know, what the heck? I mean, you left us with a planet that's like a burned out cinder. Thanks a lot, 21st century. NASA has also been investigating over one of Greenland's earliest melt seasons on record. This year, the melt is progressing more typically despite warm temperatures in the Arctic. Dr. Brooke Medley of the Goddard Space Flight Center heads the operations in Greenland. Over the past few days, we've seen a significant amount of actually liquid water on the surface that has both accumulated in small ponds and probably approaching the size of lakes, especially near the edge of the ice sheet. An interesting thing is that the melt season actually in Greenland started pretty much end of April, beginning of May, which in the grand scheme of things is very close to a month earlier than, than average. My name is Brooke Medley. I'm the Deputy Project Scientist for Operation Icebridge. Uh, last April and May, we were actually flying in Greenland out of Kangerluzwak on the NASA P3. This was somewhat of a unique year where we, we expected to be going early enough where we would see the typical um, dry snow conditions, but rather we were met um, with a much different scenario where we saw all these uh, spectacular blue ponds of, of beautiful liquid water just uh, pooling on top of the surface. The ice sheet is actually experiencing almost an additional 
month of melt because it started so early here. Part of it is actually driven by the fact that it's very warm right now, but also that there was not a lot of snowfall last winter. And so what that means is um, when the, the snow does melt, it very quickly exposes darker ice, which can then melt even faster. It went from pretty much frozen over at the surface uh, just before the melt started to completely unfrozen and the rivers have risen and there's just a significant increase in the total amount of water that we, we just see in general. Over the course of 2019, uh, there was so much melt that it actually ended up being the second largest uh, meltwater production year for the Greenland Ice Sheet since 1980. What happens when you have a, uh, an extreme melt year is that it can often impact a subsequent season. Are we going to be seeing another 2019 because we've preconditioned the ice sheet to be more uh, susceptible to melt? And, and interestingly, it's actually quite simple. The longer your melt season, that means you can just have more time to accumulate more melt. And the only place for this water to go is into the ocean. So it will be driving uh, sea level rise. And Greenland is currently, um, outside of the thermal expansion of the ocean, is the largest contributor uh, to global sea level rise. So what do you think about the Earth getting warmer? And can we turn the heat down? Well, About Space will continue to follow the story. And be sure to have your family and friends listen each Tuesday with me on About Space Today and on Fridays, America in Space with Dawn Meyer from Florida Space Coast. And follow us on Facebook for space news updates at aboutspace.today. Our Tuesday shout-out goes to Taiwan with its many listeners who enjoy our weekly programs. And to all our friends and listeners around the globe and here in the U.S., Thank you for listening. I'm David Denault, and this has been About Space Today.